So welcome to the genetic engineering video. You might already have heard of genetic engineering or genetically modifi genetic modification. You may have heard of crops being genetically mod modified or you've maybe seen things like pigs that glow in the dark or cats that glow in the dark. I think that would be quite handy in this picture here. You can see this cat here glowing in the dark. It'd be quite handy if I could meet my black dog glow in the dark. She can be quite hard to spot sometimes when I've got her out on a walk. But in this video, we're going to look at how genetic engineering produces useful products and to describe the genetic engineering process. And to do that, we're going to put genetic engineering into context. So we're going to have a look, first of all, at the disease diabetes. Now, when an individual suffers from diabetes, uh, they cannot produce insulin. And that means that they can't control the level of blood, of glucose that is in their blood. And they have to use insulin and inject that insulin into their bodies to help to keep their blood glucose levels at the right, within the right parameters. And in the past, they've used insulin that came from cows and pigs. Now, this had problems with it. It was a pretty slow and expensive process. To You had to wait for your cow or your pig to grow up, and then you had to remove the insulin from it. Some people were allergic to animal insulin, and also, as well, some people didn't like the idea of injecting a substance that came from animals. So, this problem has been solved by producing insulin that has been genetic, produced from genetically engineered organisms. So what do we mean when we are talking about genetic engineering? Well, genetic engineering, put simply, is the transfer of genetic in material from one organism to another. And the example that we are going to be looking at here is the example of a gene from a human being transferred to a bacteria or to a bacterium. Now bacteria are, are often used for this process and they're used for it because they not only have, if you remember back to your, your cell biology unit, they not only have a circular DNA contained within them, but they also have these smaller rings of DNA, which are called plasmids. And these are very easy to take out of the bacterial cell, to alter, and then to put them, to replace them back into bacterial cells. I'm going to have a look at how that process takes place. So we're going to look at this diagram here. And in this diagram of this slide here, we've got up here, this part here is representing, oh, sorry, up here is representing the human part of a chromosome. And within that chromosome or along there, we've got this green here, and that is representing part of the human chromosome or a gene. And in this situation, we're going to look at, call it the gene for insulin. And what happens is that the scientists can use a special enzyme to cut out the gene from the chromosome. So this is what's happened here. And then over here, we've got a situation here where a plasmid has been removed from a bacterial cell. And the plasmid can be cut open as well. And it's cut open using enzymes as well. And they use the same enzyme for this cutting open process as they've used for the cutting open of the, the insulin gene out of the human chromosome so that the gene will be able to fit into the plasmid or that the gene can be inserted into the plasmid where the plasmid has been cut open. When that has happened, a, a special gene a enzyme is used to stick them together. So enzymes play a key part in this process. Now what happens next is that that plasmid, along with the gene for producing insulin, is then placed into a bacteria. So the bacteria has got that gene in there for making the insulin. Now, 
I'm just representing in this diagram this happening with one bacteria. But what happens is that you get quite a few of them with the plasmid inserted into them. And then what happens is that that bacteria then starts to multiply. It's put into something, a large tank, something like this, maybe even larger than this, called a fermenter. And in there, it will be given lots of nutrients, it'll be given sugars, it'll be at the right temperature, it'll have the right pH, and so on and so forth. And so the bacteria all start to multiply in that fermenter. And when they start to multiply in there, they've got the they all have the insulin producing gene inside them. So they actually produce lots and lots of insulin. And then what happens is that that insulin hormone, at the end of this process, after some time when there's been lots of the product produced, that insulin hormone can then be extracted and it can be purified. And it can be put into bottles like this bottle here of insulin where it's sterile and then the person who's diabetic can take that insulin out using a syringe and inject that insulin into their body. The advantage to that is that it's human insulin that's being produced so it's less likely to produce some sort of allergic reaction in the individual. It's also much faster to produce as well, you're not having to grow up cattle and things, things and you're not having to kill an organism in order to get the insulin out of it. Now, when the bacteria has been altered like this, the bacteria is described as being genetically modified. In other words, what has happened is some uh, genetic material from an other organism has been transferred from that other organism into the bacteria and made it a genetically modified organism. So for your National 5, you have to know the process of genetic engineering. And this is a kind of typical example of a question that would come up where it shows the stages of genetic engineering. And in this case here, it's looking at producing a medicine such as insulin for human use. And what you need to do is you have to identify the different stages that are happening in it and answer a question. This asks you to complete a table to identify the parts labelled in the diagram. So we've got here... At this part here, this is actually representing the human chromosome. And this black section here is representing the human gene. And here, this part here is representing when that gene has been cut out. Down here is representing the bacterial cell. And this is the plasmid here. It's only showing the plasmid. It's not showing any other DNA material. And you'll see the plasmid's been extracted and it's been cut open. And then the human gene has been inserted into that plasmid. And then the plasmid has been reinserted into a bacterial cell. Now it asks you to identify then which are the labelled parts. So the bacterial cell in this situation here is E. The insulin gene is C. And the plasmid, well the plasmid isn't labelled until this part here. So the plasmid is represented by D. So you'll see how it's important to know the process in order to be able to identify the different sections.